the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Today, we memorialize uh, the desire for the protection of unborn children, the legal protection of unborn children. Ordinarily, here in the United States, we do that on January 22nd. But since the 22nd was Sunday, we do it this year today. So we pray for the protection of unborn children. And we, we are asked by the church to dedicate this day to prayer to save our children everywhere. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. God, our Creator, we give thanks to you who alone have the power to impart the breath of life as you form each of us in our mother's womb. Grant, we pray, that we, whom you have made ser- uh, stewards of creation, may remain faithful to this sacred trust and constant in safeguarding the dignity of every human life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Christ is mediator of a new covenant, since a death has taken place for deliverance from transgressions under the first covenant. Those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. For Christ did not enter into a sanctuary made by hands, a copy of the true one, but heaven itself, that he might now appear before God on our behalf. Not that he might offer himself repeatedly as the high priest enters each year into the sanctuary with blood that is not his own. If that was so, he would have had to suffer repeatedly from the foundation of the world. But now once for all, he has appeared at the end of the ages to take away sin by his sacrifice. Just as it is appointed that human beings die once and after this the judgment, so also Christ, offered once to take away the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to take away sin, but to bring salvation to those who eagerly await him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A responsorial song. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done mar- marvelous deeds. Sing, Sing to the Lord, Lord a new song, song for he, he has done, done marvelous Lord. deeds. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done wondrous deeds. His right hand was has won victory for him, his holy arm. Sing, Sing to, to the Lord, Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous Lord. deeds. The Lord has made his salvation known. In the sight of the nations, he has revealed his justice. He has remembered his kindness and his faithfulness toward the house of Israel. Sing Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous deeds. All the ends of the earth have seen the salvation by our God. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all your lands. Break into song, sing praise. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous deeds. Sing praise to the Lord with the harp, with the harp and melodious song, with trumpets and the sound of the horn. Sing joyfully before the King, the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song, for he has done marvelous deeds. Please rise for the gospel acclamation. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Our Savior, Jesus Christ, has destroyed death and brought life to light through the gospel. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The 
Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The scribes who had come from Jerusalem said of Jesus, He is possessed by Beelzebul, and by the prince of demons he drives out demons. Summoning them, he began to speak to them in parables. How can Satan drive out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, the kingdom cannot stand. If a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself and is divided, he cannot stand. That is the end of him. But no one can enter a strong man's house to plunder his property unless he first ties up the strong man. Then he can plunder his house. Amen, I say to you, all sins and all blasphemies that people utter will be forgiven them. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never have forgiveness, but is guilty in everlasting sin. For they had said, he has an unclean spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise you, the words of the Gospel, may our sins be wiped away. So the scribes are accusing Jesus. They say, oh yeah, he's driving away demons, but you know how he does it. He's, he's like a general in Satan's army, and so he can order the, the, the demons any way he wants, and they have to obey because he outranks them. And, and people will listen to that, and they'll say, well, they, that's how armies work. You know, the general gives orders, and the people have to do what they're said. So maybe. And of course, Jesus says, that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous. What general would fight against his own armies? What general would set his armies fighting against each other? How could he possibly hope to win? Satan is not stupid. He would never fight against his own. And Jesus explains, he says, the demons are like a strong man. The way you defeat a strong man is to be a stronger man. Jesus is the stronger man. The stronger man defeats the strong man, ties him up, sends him away. We know that Jesus is stronger than Satan. In fact, we know that Jesus is infinitely stronger than Satan. But people, they hear explanations, they hear something that sounds logical, and they say, yeah, okay, that, yeah, yeah, that's, that sounds right. Yeah, sure. They did it then, they do it now. Now we're trying, we're hoping, we're praying to end abortion in this country and really around the world. And what is the, the, the complaint of people who are pro-choice? They say, oh, a woman has one night of enjoyment and, and if she becomes pregnant from that, what, she should be tied down with a baby? She should be forced to have a baby and, and then to raise it and to put it through college all because of one night? Would God really want a woman to have to go through that? God who is so forgiving, would God force a woman to go through all of that? Oh, that doesn't sound like God. And we say, oh, yeah, that doesn't sound like God, does it? He's forgiving and loving. And then you take a step back and say, God is the Lord of life. God creates all life. Babies are created with the mother and the father and God who gives them an immortal soul. And when God creates a child in the womb of the mother, are we saying that God says, I'm done. Whether you let the child live or whether you decide to kill the child, it's all the same to me. It's all up to you, the mother. I don't care one way or the other. Does that sound like the Lord of love? Does that sound like the creator of life? Does that sound like our God? Because if you think about it, if God doesn't care about the unborn child, then he doesn't care about the born child either. And he doesn't care about the adults that the born children grow into. If that were all true, then none of us is more than bug on the windshield. 
And if God saw us all as a bug on the windshield, why did he send his son to save us, to suffer and die for us and to save us all? The false logic that people use to promote and protect the right of abortion is very faulty. We as Americans, we are as guilty as anyone else. And matter of fact, in the world, we're amongst the most guilty up with Russia and China and North Korea and the killing of our children. I always think of this around Christmas time. Remember when Herod, uh, trying to kill the firstborn king of the Jews, and the three kings didn't report where they had found him, he, he went ahead and killed uh, all the children in that area, all the boys of a certain age and under, just to be sure to kill the newborn king of the Jews. Of course, Jesus and his family had escaped to Egypt at that point through the help of an angel. <laughs> But Herod, he thought he did it. And we look back and we say, oh, how terrible he is. He killed all those children. We look back now, in America, we're killing 20,000 children per week. To us, King Herod is an amateur. We can change, and we are changing. God is changing this. We're grateful that here in America, Roe versus Wade has been overthrown, and that has upset so many people. It hasn't accomplished that much. It's a first step, yes, and we are joyful and grateful to God for helping us with that. But that just means that the states are not required to kill children upon demand by the federal government. They still have the right to do it. Here in New York, where we're some of the worst offenders in the world. You can kill babies right up until the time of their birth. And their mother is considered a hero for taking control of her life. Let us support women and their children and pregnant women and give support to everyone who needs it. We can't just say, abortion's bad, 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 bad. No, we have to support them, reach out and help everyone who's having a baby. Let abortion not be the last choice. Let it be no choice at all. Let there be no need for it. That we care for all children because they are all children of God and are all our brothers and sisters. Let us bring our prayers to the Lord, asking the Father to provide all that we need. For the church, may the Holy Spirit guide her in the sacred mission of proclaiming Christ to the world. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For elected officials, may they be enlightened by the Holy Spirit in enacting laws and actions that promote the sanctity of life from conception to natural death. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for women in difficult pregnancies, may God's love guide them in solving the issues that trouble them. Let us pray to the Lord. For all of us gathered here and around the world, may the Lord's mercy be upon us all that we say and do. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord hear our for those who have died, may they soon see the face of God face to face. Let us pray to the Lord. Today we offer this Mass for Barbara Smith, and for Rose Barbarella, may God pour his light and love upon them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord and we pray for all the holy souls in purgatory. And we pray for all the babies who are in danger of abortion. That God will protect them and give them life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord we pray for all the families of babies in pregnancy and in birth. May he send his angels to protect them every step of the way. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Heavenly Father, hear the prayers we offer today and grant us whatever we need to fulfill your will 
We ask this through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed be God. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Let us be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord. And may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, Lord, of my iniquity and cleanse me of my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice in our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept our humble offerings, O Lord of the living, and unite us to the perfect sacrifice of your Son, through whom you have made all creation new, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Amen. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him you have been pleased to renew all things, giving us all a share in his fullness. For though he was in the form of God, he emptied himself and by the blood of his cross brought peace to all creation. Therefore he has been exalted above all things, and to all who obey him has become the source of eternal salvation. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. May the receiving of your body and blood, Lord Jesus Christ, not bring me to judgment and condemnation, but through your loving mercy be for me protection in mind and body and a healing remedy. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. May the blood of Christ keep me safe for eternal life.
our spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. What is past our lips as food, O Lord, may we possess in purity of heart. What has been given to us in time may be our healing for eternity. Let us pray. Increase your love within us, Lord God, by the saving mysteries we have celebrated, and bring people everywhere to respect your gift of human life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us keep our unborn brothers and sisters in our prayers today, their well-being, and may God love them and protect them always and show us ways to help them and continue his ways in removing abortion from the United States and from the world. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth and proclaim the gospel of the Lord. Beautiful, prayerful day today.